Hello and welcome to The Student Space, a podcast for students about high school, life after school and how to actually be an adult. In this episode, I chat with Julia about her Bachelor of Exercise Sports Science at Deakin University. We unpack the structure of her course, the placement experience and the range of career opportunities nearing the end of the degree. Before we jump into the chat, I want to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm recording this podcast and pay my respects to the elders past and present of the Rwandri people of the Kulon Nations. Hello and welcome, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Student Space podcast. Before we get into it today, like I ask all our guests, I want to ask three before the degree. So three random questions before we start chatting about your degree. Now, the first one, I've asked a few other people this before, but when you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a vet. Oh, tell me more. Uh, Well, we had a dog when I was little and we had a cat when I started prep. My dad found him at a building site and I was obsessed with the cat, so I wanted to be a vet for the cats only. Oh, there you go. (laughs) And how did that turn out? Obviously, you're not a vet now. No. (laughs) (laughs) When did you change your mind? I think it was probably when we started aerobics and gymnastics. I'm sure we'll talk about that a bit later. Exactly right. And what was the last book that you read? Um, I read a book called The Land Army Girls. I don't know who it's by, but it is about, um, I think, Second World War where all the men went off and fought in the war and the women had to go and work in the farms Ooh. and pick all the fruits and do all that kind of stuff. So very interesting. Do you recommend? Around. Yeah, it was good. I'm liking that kind of, you know, feminist literature at the moment and just... Why not? You know, that, and then, yeah, I just read the Florence Given um, Women Don't Are You Pretty. Yes, I... Actually, just read that as well, and I highly oh. recommend it to anyone. Yeah, I kind of wish that I had it when I was a bit younger. Yeah, growing up, or if I had read yeah. that when I was in high school, it would have made a world of difference because a I lot know. of the, a lot of the catchphrases or things that we hear growing up, mm. it, it was yeah, it was. Yeah, I honestly think like maybe, I don't know how young would be too young to get your hands on that book, but I would, I would maybe say even like year seven, I would have benefited from that. Year seven, year eight. It's a bit young. Definitely. I feel like if you went through it, maybe with a parent and discuss the themes more so. Definitely. Yeah. And also one more thing. Yep, go for Um, it. I I ripped out a page from the book and I framed it and it's sitting on my desk. Is it an illustration? Yeah. Which one is it? It is protect your energy. Oh, love it. Yeah. But there's heaps and I've seen people been doing that. So I did it too. Oh, I might copy you. What I'll do is I'll pop the book in the show notes so you can go back and like understand what on earth we are talking about. It's definitely yeah. worth it. And the last question, what was your favorite subject at school and why? Um, it would have been PE, which would decide me doing my course that I've just done at uni. So ah, that was good. Cool. Um, and probably psychology as well. Awesome. We had a really good teacher shout out miss green oh yes um and yeah she was just fantastic and so interesting so and you know on class that was great on that note it actually is like the teacher will make or break it it could be the most yeah. boring subject but if the teacher is like animated mm. and so yes what's the word enthusiastic it mm-hmm. really makes a difference yeah. i think there's some great teachers out there which is so good to see and you'll be great as well. oh thank <laughs> you if anyone doesn't know i am studying to do teaching so yes she is Anyway, let's go on. So, Julia, you just graduated from a Bachelor of Exercise Sports Science at Deakin University. Congratulations. Thanks so much. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Now, but we will chat about your degree, but let's go back to high school quickly. Tell us about your high school experience. What subjects did you do? What were your aspirations for uni, I'm guessing, after you thought you wanted to be a vet? Yes. (laughs) I feel like the vet thing was very, very young. And then since I can remember, I've always been interested in exercise, fitness, um, yeah, just really into the whole gym. I think I started going to the gym when I was about 15, 14, 15. Like I remember. And this is pre-Instagram days where like yeah. girls didn't go to the gym. Yeah, I would, and people used to look at me because I was quite young, but I was really like going for it. Not to toot my own horn or anything. No, but that's that's yeah. And so you should. Yeah, I I would have people coming up to me and like asking me like how old I was or like what I was training for or stuff like that. Um, but I remember, you know, those body and soul magazines. I think so. You just get them from the supermarket. Yeah, you get them from the in the newspaper. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I remember being like fifteen and like cutting out the workout sections of that, and I was obsessed with them. Like every Sunday, I would cut them out and I'd stick them in a big folder. 
Love I think it. I got rid of it all now because half of the exercises are not that good for you anyway. But um, yeah, <laughs> I used to just, have yeah, I think I, I would always like make my own programs to do in the gym. Wow. And I, so from, yeah, from quite young, I used to just be, find it quite easy and like, I really like the creativity of putting exercises together and making a program with them as well. So yeah, I really love that side of it. So that's awesome. Um, and on yeah. that note, that probably relates to like your out of school co-curricular experience. I do know Julia previously because we did <laughs> aerobic gymnastics together. We did. <laughs> so tell us about that during high school. Look, that was the best. Like looking back now, I'm like, it was so, it was so tough, but yeah, we were able to go to training like three times yep. a week plus competitions on the weekend plus extra gym, extra sessions where we would go in our backyards and do routines yep. and strength and whatever. <laughs> And yeah, we were able to do all of our schoolwork at the same time and extra ex- exams and stuff too. So it was pretty crazy what we used to do. I know. Looking back, I'm like a bit of a machine. Um, I know. I don't think I could grind like that now, to be honest. It's a different world, I <laughs> guess. <laughs> You're in the bubble of school and yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like for both of us, competing got a lot harder once we were at uni and we were working for sure. And transition to more like becoming an adult as opposed to say being in school bubble being young yeah and the training you know we were obviously in higher levels as well and the training became more about what we wanted to do and that yeah it was less coach focused and more athlete focused which was good our growth but yeah just very challenging but great altogether yeah great learning experience (laughs) reflecting back yeah and so what actually inspired you to choose your course at Deakin University um I was well because I was already kind of into the whole fitness and gym atmosphere um because I was doing aerobics with you as well like I was very much into the strength and I liked seeing all of the drills that we were doing and how they led us to be able to do our routines and compete certain skills so I think I'd heard about it from an open day at school where we had like people come in and talk about their careers yep and then mum took me to an open day I think I was year 11, so we went a little bit earlier just so I could see, maybe year 10 even, just so I could see what subjects to pick yep. in order f- good. to do that course. Good idea. Which I think is a really good thing to do. So, yeah, year 10, year 11, I would suggest going to some open days if you haven't already. And, yeah, I ended up doing, I did health in a year early, so I did it as a year 11, doing a 3-4 yep. health and human development. Yep. I did PE, I did psychology, I did biology, I did uh, maths, just further maths. And I did English and they were my subjects. Awesome. And do you think that, or not do you think, do you know if any of those subjects were prerequisites for your course? I don't think any particularly were, but I think it was strongly encouraged that you would do biology yep. um, because there was a lot of uh, like cells and like biology was literally the first subject I did in first year uni. It was like a biology of the body kind of all the body systems all the cells that kind of stuff so it was strong strongly suggested biology strongly suggested PE as well because that was fundamentally what the whole course was but obviously just fleshed out in way more detail for sure now I've got a side question had yeah. someone not done bio or had someone not done PE would they struggle First year, would you they think- probably would have to be honest just in terms of grasping those kind of concepts that you would have already grasped grasped before yeah I did have some friends that hadn't done biology in school and I remember being in that class and they were really struggling whereas I kind of had some idea like it was hard yeah but I had some idea I knew about I knew how the cells moved and worked and were made and that kind of thing and yeah I knew basics so it wasn't as bad for me but I think it was definitely doable still yeah cool yeah and had you not gotten into that course did you have a backup option or perhaps maybe a different uni I had applied for RMIT, yep. same course. Um, I think I'd applied for some like maybe, maybe VU as well, same course. I think I only applied for exercise science though. Okay. I didn't apply for physio, which was um, interesting looking back. But I yeah, I, did, I don't think I want to be a physio. Totally um, fair enough. Yeah, I'm more into the, I guess, exercise and strength side of it and less into diagnosing the injuries. I'm more into like fixing them through exercise yeah Mm. cool did you ever consider taking a gap year um I didn't actually because I felt like I was really into it straight out of year 12 I was ready to go yeah I felt fresh I didn't really need a break and I was in that study space but I do I did end up taking a gap year in 2018 
and I went traveling for six months and um, or five months actually. Did you take the whole year off study? Yeah, I took the whole year off. Yep. Um, I intermitted the course, not deferred. Okay, so take a short break. Yeah, and so you could only take a year off for my course in total for the amount of time that you do the course. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so I did six months of working and then like five months of travel and yeah I feel like at that point I needed the I needed the year off because I was kind of burnt out I didn't really know if I wanted to continue like I was just a bit unsure of where I was heading with it um and with everything really so it was really good having that having that year off yeah my so my course was three years in length but I took five years to do it because I was part-time for a bit and I took a year off and they also changed the course structure within that um, time that I was at Deakin. So the course looked a little bit different. So I had a few subjects that I had to do that were extra and a few that I didn't need, really need to do. Yeah. And you know what, just for anyone listening, it's totally normal for say a three year course to take four or five years. Mm-hmm. You underload, you want to travel, you want to take time off, yep. maybe you want to work for a year, pursue something different. That is totally normal. Oh, it's the best. I exactly. Think definitely. I'm kind of happy that I did it mid course as well because I kind of already started something and I had, I guess, something to go back to and stuff too. So I think if I'd done it first year out, you know, there's that risk that you actually won't go and do it because you'll be just like, maybe you end up getting a really good job and that's fine. You don't actually have to go to uni if you yeah. don't want to. That's you very know? true. Now let's chat about the first day of uni or maybe the first year. What was your transition like from high school to being a uni student and essentially being by yourself? Mm. My transition was really great. So I'm very lucky. I feel like in school I had a really great work work ethic and I was, you know, very, very determined and hardworking and my study habits were, you know, really well developed. So I was able to quite easily transition into university learning Um, I do remember there being a bit less kind of interaction with the lecturers or teachers than you would have at school. Yep. But I I found most of them really approachable at uni at at Deakin. So you could, you could always walk up up to them after the lecture or after the seminar, ask them questions, send them emails and and things like that. Um, So yeah, in terms of the work and the workload, I was, I was pretty fine, actually. I was enjoying it. Do you mm. think the workload in your first year was harder or easier than the workload in year 12? I think it was, I think it was harder content. Yep. But it, I don't think it was as much work as maybe year 12 was. Well, I would, I'd say it's equivalent. Okay. I'd say it's not, it wasn't too different for me. There wasn't many contact hours in my first year. I was only there for like 10 hours a week, maybe. So did you have it on like two days, three days? Yeah, it was like two or three days a week. They weren't even full days. Like I think one of them was a full day and the other one was like a half day or something. Okay. Yeah, so the the course doesn't have like that many contact hours and you can always choose to do subjects online and stuff too. So And that's especially, well, this is pre-COVID world. Deakin yeah. was always ahead of the game with online learning. Yeah, they have um, the option to do cloud subjects. And yeah, that's before COVID and everything. So you could select, yeah, either to do it at Burwood or if you're at Geelong campus, Waterfront campus, or you could select cloud. So oh. I actually selected that for a few subjects just because I didn't want to go in that much. Or if I was wanting to work more, I could do that and be able to do it, you know, all the lectures and online learning from home. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. And how about making friends in your first year? Do you think the course was quite social or was it easy to meet people? Yeah, I was really lucky. My my course was very social. Um, in O Week, I I don't know why, but I decided to go to every single event. But which why not? Ended up working out really well, and I'm really happy I did. I um, what kind of events? I, what are we yeah, talking? Yeah, so there was a jungle party, oh. a beach party. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> there was like a movie night, and I think that was about it. There maybe there was maybe another little lunch kind of. And who organised in like the societies? Yeah, clubs? like the Deacon. Um, Deacon Oatwick, whatever. Yeah, the, cool. the people that do that. Um, and they were really, really great events. Like one of them was at Crown. Wow. One of them was at Alumbra, like the party ones. So it was really funny. And, yeah, I ended up meeting in that first Oatwick, I met probably four or five of, like, of friends who are my closest friends now. So I was able to really form a group and then somehow they all met each other. And that's really, then we were all friends. That's so, really special. Yeah, so they're like my best friends now. So I was super lucky to find really like-minded people at Deakin. 
and make some lifelong friendships along the way. I love it. Yeah. For someone who is going to this course with no one at all, was that you? Did you know anyone doing your course? I knew I had one friend. Okay. But yeah. let's say someone is Loose coming. friend, yeah. If someone is coming with no one, what's your biggest mm. piece of advice for them to say branch out and make those friends? Like, you yeah, know? I would say in that like O week, maybe, maybe like it might be a bit, might be a bit like intimidating to go to a party by yourself. But um, you know, if there are events that aren't necessarily like a big party in a nightclub kind of thing, then I would go to those. Also, just like I have the classes on my first week and even just like first, I mean, couple of months at uni, like I made like a real effort to like talk to people in my class yeah. like you know sit next to you know I'd, I'd probably sit next to like end up sitting next to the same person but I'd, I'd end up knowing them and end up being friends yeah. with them and that's how I met a lot of friends too just in classes doing group assignments just chatting you know totally mm. and just don't be afraid to put yourself out there like it's yeah. so different to school it's almost like a fresh start there's no like social groups there's no like hierarchy or anything yeah. like it's just a blank slate so you can go in just sit next to someone and be like hey what are you studying well, yeah. like, what's your major or whatever exactly and we all used to sit in the library together like a huge table of us all in the same course and all of us had come from different places doesn't matter yeah so it was great vibes so nice yeah and going back to your high school subjects if you had to pick any other ones mm. that would help you in your course so you did bio and you did pe mm-hmm. and you did health were there any others that you think oh maybe i should have done it it would have helped like were, were there any like really hard maths in your course that you thought, oh, I would have needed methods or something? Yeah, I would actually agree with that. Methods would have been a little bit more helpful than probably further. But having said that, my math skills are pretty poor, but I was really struggling this year and last year in um, advanced biomechanics. Yep. That was a lot of formulas and just really confusing maths that I wasn't really across and that some that I had never even learned. So Okay. Um, that was quite challenging for me, but still I got through it. So it's fine. Further okay. will get you there anyway. Um, are there resources or like classes or they call consultations if you are struggling bad in maths and or with the biomechanics? Yeah. Can you get help? Yeah. They were really good. You could make private meetings with the um, with the lecturers or like by contacting the unit chair. So, yeah, I found like there was lots of support throughout and I was always, you know, reaching out to lecturers and um, other professors if I needed help yeah awesome perfect yeah. that is so comfortable like comfort word comforting so comforting know, to know right yeah day, I just feel like Deacon are really good at providing that extra help especially in this year with COVID when we weren't even on campus like it was great you could book a session and meet in a zoom meeting with your teacher or whatever and they would go through any questions that you had on assignments or class questions as well that's so important mm. especially when you don't have that into like what's it called face-to-face yeah. interaction yeah awesome okay so as you progress through the course what was the structure like was it always like two two and a half days a week lectures tutorials prax what what's a prac? Yeah, there was so there was lectures which was just your standard in your theater yep um powerpoints on the board lecturers talking Sit and you're listen. taking notes yep yep which were, I remember having some fun in those the first year. <laughs> that was so funny because we'd have like all of everyone that we knew was in the same one. So there was like 500 people in there or something. They're like huge theatres. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, maybe not that many. Like, I don't know. There was a lot of people in the theatres. Now can you not go to those? Can you watch them at home? Yeah, you can watch them at home now. I believe you could have done that too, but I never used to be an online learning person. But now I think I have transitioned have- with that. But as technology has progressed as well, I just got a new laptop as well where I can – flip it it's a hp specter i can flip Ooh, it in half shout out to yeah, hp I know, not not sponsored <laughs> you can flip it in half and you can write on it like a tablet so it's great for prax and that kind of thing cool anyway anyway progress. what's a seminar or did you seminar have is yeah a seminar is a smaller group of about 20 students yep. and then your seminar or professor or whatever you've got um and some of the actual teachers were past students as well wow so that's like a job opportunity to um, once you graduate your yeah if you get a job through university you can actually teach some subjects so that's, that's pretty, pretty good that's yeah. pretty good to know so it was good to see those past students too because we were able to ask them like what they're doing now and how they're feeling and stuff like that um so yeah that was like small kind of group learning where there'd be like maybe some case studies you do do things with in the class but it was in a classroom still okay but we were able to get up and do like maybe it would have been like 
I guess like measurements or like some functional movement screening, like that kind of stuff. But it wasn't like full ex- like exercise in that class. Yeah. And then the prax, we yep. had prax too. We had a few that were like in the labs. So the biology ones were in the labs. And I'm talking lab, like a science lab. Okay. Like I'm so, picturing the science class. Yeah. So I, yeah. So there was like a dissection one, I'm pretty sure. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. So some unis have cadavers, which are, I guess, deceased um body parts body parts or persons yeah we deacon doesn't have them i believe rmit does and latrobe has them yeah and latrobe Mm, thanks Mm. but yeah deacon doesn't have them um i'm not i'm not sure as to what the reason why that is but um yeah we were able to just use like um, models that they had there um so yeah some of our classes were looking at you know parts of the body kind of really looking deep into the layers of the tissue and layers of muscle and really trying to understand how each muscle moves in that kind of way. And then some of our pracs were in the gym, lifting, weights. Yeah, full like athletic um, performance programming, which is, you know, the really exciting part of it. And then other parts for pracs were in biomechanics labs. So there would be big labs with um, force plates underneath the ground. What's a force plate? So it's like this plate that sits underground and it measures the force that you exert into oh, the ground. Oh, a bit of physics. Yeah, so that's what I mean. It's like there's all this math. That's all biomechanics. Yep, yeah, gotcha. So that was a lot of our work too, was seeing, you know, how much force was going through, you know, the leg as you jump down onto the force platform, that kind of thing. Awesome. And then, you know, does that relate to injury? Does that relate to performance? Wow, you know, I want to know more. I love it. Yeah. Now, I'm sure like biomechanics is all super fun and exciting and biology but were there any other subjects outside like your core units that were say fun electives yes you could do yeah you had electives allocated every year I think there was one or two depending on what your core structure looked like um so I did sport coaching in first year yep I also did like this one that was like I think it was called like sports bodies action which was just like the like sociology so it was like an art subject oh wow and it was just about like yeah that kind of aspects of sport in terms of like gender and race and that kind of thing so I thought that was really interesting um I think you could choose things that were not related to so like sport I did psychology as well actually oh but yeah you could choose other things but I found that I wanted to keep it kind of specific and choose things that would help me with the degree and with the yeah the course totally fair enough and i know a huge part of your degree also requires you to be and go on placement yes so what was your placement requirements during your degree did you have to go from first year and how many days was it mm. so we didn't have to go from first year and i kind of i kind of wish that that was a thing um or even that getting your cert three four was kind of like you know incorporated in the first year of your studies because that's pretty much what you do anyway yep so it's kind of bizarre in that you could finish the whole degree and you still don't have your cert three and four in fitness and if you want to get that you have to go to an external body and get that so i've got my cert three in fitness and that has allowed me to get a job group training yeah but depending on the provider some of them for insurance reasons won't take you if you don't have those minimum certificates but like Mm. just for insurance reasons there you go. And, and especially if you haven't graduated. So I hadn't graduated when I was trying to get a job. So I wasn't able to get like a group fitness job without getting my Cert 3 in fitness, which is group training. Now, can mm. we talk about that for a second? Yeah. You're doing a degree of exercise sports science and it's mm. a bachelor degree. But other people can get a certificate 3 and 4 in fitness, yeah. which is essentially is like just a PT course. Yeah. It's a why, PT course. Yeah. Why, would, why would someone want to do the degree as opposed to just getting the PT course and working I don't want to say similar jobs. I really don't because I'm not discrediting you at all. But yeah, yeah that's exactly right. It is quite similar. And that's what I'm finding now that I've graduated. You know, I, I can, you know, be a PT, but obviously the amount of knowledge that you have doing three years of uni is probably a little bit more than what um, a PT would have. Although having saying that, I have met some great PTs who have, you know, done their Cert 4s. They've worked for many years under some great coaches and they have great experience and they're great coaches. So I mean, either way, I just, I would say that I would have, I would wish that it may be in the first year that maybe I would have done it myself, or maybe it could have been incorporated in the uni just to get the Cert 3-4 so that in that first year you can start working as a PT so that by the time you finish your degree, you've worked, what, three years as a PT, it depends how long it takes you to do the course. Yep. For me, it took five years. I could have been working four years as a PT 
would have been learning along the way using that with my clients, programming for real people. And then bam, I finish. I've got that under my belt. I've got two or three placements under my belt. Hopefully that would have, that would help you get um, a job. Kind of sets you apart from the rest. And that's actually really great advice. If you are going into a degree of exercise sports science, there's nothing stopping you getting your like certificate three and four in fitness. So like your PT course working as well as studying because they do complement each other. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And a lot of the the things you learn at uni are just going to build on that cert four of fitness in much more detail. And yeah, because a lot of the things that we've been doing at uni with the whole biomechanics and using, I guess, um, some of the technologies such as the force plates and the speed gates, which measures your speed. Yep. Um, so like a lot of that performance testing is extra. Like I, I don't believe you do that in a Cert 4. Yep. Um, other than just your basic like analysis, biomechanic analysis of how the body moves. But with these kind of technologies and such, we can measure, you know, velocity, speed, exact force, like there's so much stuff that you can do, be done. Yeah. yeah, you do much more. Which is a lot more like high level elite kind of performance things. So just chatting off mic before, we did talk about your placement experience. And I know placement is such a huge part of exercise sports science degree because, again, you have to put into practice all the theory. Now, I'll give the listeners a quick summary and then we can just dive in and talk about all the different parts. But with your degree, you had two opportunities to do placement. So one was in the second year and the next part was in the third year. And so you have a certain amount of hours in year two and then in the last part you have 140 hours, which seems like a lot. What you also did was another type of placement. So you went and self-sourced kind of an internship in your first year, which was definitely not required of your course. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I sourced my own placement, um, actually an internship in my first year of uni, um, which looking back was a great thing that I did. I think I was just super interested and I'd seen the ad um, pop up. Um, I think I found about it actually through the high school doing PE. They presented a lecture. Um, so it was with Exercise Research Australia and they offered a internship where we were there kind of working in clinic and doing placements and, and things like that. But out of it, we also got a Cert 3 and 4 in allied health assistance, which is pretty much you could work in a hospital with that. You can get a job as an allied health assistant. You could work in a hospital assisting physios, assisting OTs. So pretty much with that, you're qualified to um, take some of the, I guess, programs that the physios write. But I don't think you'd be qualified to take all of them. Okay. But you're able to assist. You're more of like an assistant if the physio is busy or if, you know, they have things to do. Um, you can kind of take over where you need to. But wow. obviously you can't diagnose and do any kind of things like that. Of course. And think yeah. about it straight out of high school, going into this intern and you'll do this, say, two days a week. Yeah. And then you need the other days yeah, of the week. Yeah, like between uni and there. It's incredible to get that experience when everyone else is just like not. <laughs> like yeah, exactly kind of, right. Kind of giving you the one up. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And then what about your first placement experience through the university? Where did you do that? Yeah, so for this is a subject that requires you to do 80 hours of placement and that's a new thing. I think that's just come in this year or maybe last year. So I know some people that have had to go back and do the 80 hours because they hadn't done it yet. Oh, wow. Obviously they hadn't graduated yet, but um, that is now a requirement. So that can be sourced through the uni or it can also be sourced externally. So I sourced mine externally at a um, performance center called Core Advantage. I'd found out about them at an open day at Deakin back in year 11, I think I went to that. And I just kind of kept tabs on it, saw that they did a great internship and just jumped on it when I had the chance to. And then it kind of li- lined up really well. I was able to use those hours to contribute to my placement hours. Perfect. So kind of like knock two birds down, one stone kind of thing. Perfect. So that was great. And then so these placement hours are a requirement um, for ESSA to have an ESSA accreditation and ESSA is um, Exercise Sports Science Australia and it's kind of like the governing body for exercise sports science. So Deakin's really great because they have an ESSA accreditation incorporated in the bachelor's degree. Okay. Um, Whereas I think some unis don't do that, but I think most of them do by now, but I know that Deakin definitely does. So that's a great um, benefit of doing the course there. Um, And so yeah, there's a certain number of placement hours that you need to get to get your accreditation. And that means that when you graduate, you get your 
bachelor's in exercise sports science from Deakin, but you also get become an accredited exercise sport scientist with ESSA. So that just kind of adds to your reputation, I guess, as an exercise sports science um, scientist and may help you get a job, which is great. Totally. Yeah. And so, I, And I think it's important mm. that when you are applying, you are fully accredited you're registered with yeah the correct- it's like registration like it's like you being i guess like a psychologist and like you may have your degree but you need to be accredited as well or a physio same thing you know of course mm-hmm. and then your th- last round of placement the 140 hours yeah so that's like self-sourced and again that contributes to you getting your ESSA accreditation and so it needs to be signed off both of the placements need to be signed off by someone who is accredited and has a degree um, so as person or someone with Cert 4, I believe, would not be able to sign you off. So you need someone that um, is accredited. And, yeah, that was self-sourced. And um, you sort out with that um, placement provider the hours that you do, like the times of week that you go, what you know, what you do is decided by by them. So it's completely, like, separate from, from Deakin. Okay, cool. And did you also do that at Core Advantage? So I did the last one at Optimus Health, which is like a, a like a physio, and it also has like a high performance um, kind of rehabilitation center um, off the back of it too. Awesome. So they do a lot of work with like local footy and rugby teams, um, but then they also have you know th- physiotherapists that work there too, and that work with the strength coaches and stuff. So it's really collaborative there, which is great. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And you get like into what's it called like networking across yeah. different disciplines well that's the whole kind of um i guess um field is all you know collaboration between you know the physios the um the ot's the you know um, exercise, exercise physiologists physio. you know and the exercise sports scientists like that's how you know i guess allied health works is that you and the nutritionist like there's so much more it just keeps going you know they all need to collaborate with each other and you know refer clients on because, you know, there's a certain scope for each degree, what you can and can't do. So you need to be aware of that. And then you need to refer when you are not able to do what you need to do for that client. Totally. Mm. Now tell us, where else can you have placement? Now you mm. mentioned like sport clubs, gyms, um, at a place that's got lots of allied health professionals, yeah. like physios, nutritionists, anywhere else. I think those are probably the most popular places to do placement. I also, I knew a few people doing placement with the AFL umpires. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like that's because the AFL umpires, they need to be like super fit and strong. They run like 14 Ks per game. Oh, wow. Like, so they are like, you know, they have an academy where they all train and stuff as well. So yeah, there's some that are a bit out of the box, but um, yeah, I think it's just important to find something that is similar to what you want to do when you graduate you know maybe you want to work at a footy club that's great so maybe try and source a placement at um Geelong Football Club or Collingwood Football Club that sounds all like scary and hard to get in it is is quite competitive yeah and how do you find these opportunities so Deakin has a board where they post all of the um, places that are seeking interns or places that you can possibly do an internship at some of them require like a video um, application. I know I have a friend that did her placement at Collingwood and she had to submit like a video um, stating why she would be, you know, a good candidate. So it actually gives you some opportunities to practice for applying for jobs because you're essentially applying for the internship as well, which I think is a really great point. So, yeah. Now, outside of uni life and balancing work and a social life, did you have time to work part time while completing your course? Yeah, I did. Um, so the contact hours for the degree weren't um weren't that much. I would say like ten to twelve a week. But again, it depends if you're if you have some subjects online. It depends how many subjects you are doing as well. So you can, I think you can do lowest you can do is I think you could do one subject actually, a deacon. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So you could do one. You could do two, three, or four. Four is the limit. You can't overload and do five, but it's not suggested. Yep. Um. So, yeah, I was able to – I was working casually two jobs, I believe. I've been – I was working hospitality, so I was working, like, cafes. I had, like, a pub pub job. Yep. Um, That was majority of the time I was studying. And then the last, I guess, little bit of the degree, the last year or so, kind of, like, pre-COVID, but during COVID too, like, I've started coaching gymnastics, so I was able to do that and also working as a group fitness trainer too. So, yeah, they're all kind of relevant things now which is good. So I've been awesome. able to do that all the way through it and it's been it's been time. It's it's busy, but there is definitely time. 
And I guess it's like what you make of it and how organized you are and how much you take on. Like, yeah. It's all personal. Exactly. It's up to you. Like you don't have to work or you could work heaps. Like it just depends. Depends on how much time you want to spend on uni as well. Like, you know, it's completely self, self-learning, self like self, I guess, self-determined. So you can make that decision yourself. Definitely. Mm. And now nearing the end of your degree, you've finished, but what are the yes. next steps? Where can someone take a Bachelor of Exercise Sports Science? Great question. So in terms of what you can do within the degree, so your you can write training programs for people and pretty much operate as a personal trainer, um, but kind of a little bit more um, um, knowledgeable, yeah, but qualified. Yeah, just a little. You've had a little bit more, a little bit more time um, in your education. But that having having saying that, like you might have your cert four and had a lot more experience and be kind of at the same level. So it really just depends. But yeah, you can. So you can work as a trainer there, but you're not able to diagnose um, people that have, I guess, musculoskeletal injuries and things like that. So no diagnosis. Um, You also are not able to prescribe exercise programs to people that have acute and chronic conditions, but where you're trying to treat the condition, if that makes sense. Okay. So if I had someone that had like osteoporosis, I would not be able to write a training program to I guess, fix their or help their osteoporosis. I could write them a general training program provided they had clearance to participate. Yep. And maybe that general training program may focus just on their on their fitness, on their strength, on their flexibility, something like that. But I'm not able to prescribe exercises to treat them. Okay. And that's what an exercise physiologist can do. Ah. Oh. So that's when you would do your masters and post grad studies. So that's an option as well to become a physio, where you can you're qualified to do those kind of things, or an exercise physiologist, where you're qualified to do those things as well. Now that brings me to my next question: uh, Have you considered doing more study after university? Yes, I have. <laughs> and so, what path? Because I can understand yeah. like you could go physio, exercise physiologist, you could go like data scientist. I'm guessing you can just yeah. I have a friend that's doing going down like this um, biomechanics side. So he's doing like sports analysis, analysis, analytics. Sport analytics. He's doing sport analytics. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have a friend that's doing OT. Like she changed course. I have a friend that's doing physio. She changed course. Yes, yeah, so everyone's doing – I have friends that are teachers now or they're doing teaching. Could be sport teaching, but some are just re- like normal just um, curriculum teachers. Yep. I have friends that are going into public health. Health What's promotion that? kind of things, like working for big health, that kind of thing, like policy kind of stuff. Awesome. And I also have friends that are doing nursing midwifery as well too. And most of these people started with exercise science. And they've deferred yeah, they've, changed courses. They've changed courses or they've finished it and now they're doing that. Wow. So it's, it's I guess the exercise science course is great because it's so broad and it can really lead you to a lot of different things. So I would I think it's great for someone who doesn't really know what exactly they want to do, but they know like the kind of industry they're looking at. But then I also find that it is tough because there are so many options and so much uncertainty. Like you don't come out with a specific job because I guess if you do physio, you come out, you're a physiotherapist, you can work as a physiotherapist. With an, as an exercise scientist, you're, it's a bit broad. You could be doing data analysis. You could be doing personal training. You could work at a company like Kiza where they actually employ exercise scientists, um, which work with the physios. You could work at you know a high-performance gym. Like it's just, it's a bit more broad and not as specific. Yeah, mm. totally fair enough. But in some ways, that's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's good for options. Exactly. Plenty but, of options. But yeah, sorry, in more study. We went off topic. Yeah, more so. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's options to apply for those kind of um, degrees and careers like I just mentioned that some of my friends are doing. Yep. I've gone on to. So yeah, with, with this degree, you can pretty much apply for, I guess, post-grad. So of what, any are you, of those. what are you going to do? Um, I have applied for a postgrad of exercise physiology at Deakin. What is exercise physiology? Yeah, I guess it's the physiology. So you're going to be learning about the body a lot. And so as an exercise physiologist, you're able to um, work with people who have acute and chronic conditions. Um, okay. And you're able to, I guess, help them through exercise so that I guess you can, I guess, treat and monitor and prevent and just assist them with daily life um, as well. But it's all done through exercise. So you don't prescribe medicine. That's, you're not 
are able to do that. Um, but you, yeah, you can prescribe specific and controlled exercises with some like really crazy technology that we've got out there. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> wow. Well, that's pretty much almost concludes our whole chat about the degree. But before we end, I've got two more sections left. The quick five out of five and then something you wish you knew when you were in year 11 and year 12. So for the quick five out of five, I've got five little subheadings and I want you to rate it out of five. Five being incredible, amazing yeah. and one being not very good. Okay. So you literally just the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Okay. First one, quality of lecturers, academics, tutors at uni. Four and a half. Awesome. Any comments? They were great awesome. on, the, on a whole level. Um, really knowledgeable, just, yeah, people that have had lots of experience, really good teachers. And that's yeah. what you want. Awesome. Yeah. Workload. I would say like 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 three, but I just finished my last year and it was like a four. Okay. Like it was – I was pretty hectic. Yeah. You're probably the opposite. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if it was really hectic, it would be like one or two. Oh, sorry. I got, <laughs> I got the scale wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just put it in the middle then. <laughs> 2.5, that's Again, fine. Again, it depends on how much time you want to spend on uni and how much you want to work. So. Yeah, and underload, overload. Yeah, all and all I matches. tended to go on the work hard side. Yeah. It depends, depended. Yeah, all right. Social life of your course? Um, five. Like awesome. Really good. Yeah. And campus facilities, mm. so lecture theatres, the restaurants, the libraries. Five. I love Deacon. I'm at Burr with Deacon, by the way, if yep. I didn't say that before. Yep. Um. Everything's really great, clean. The library is huge, P- plenty of like little study, study areas, little nooks. Yeah. Cafes, good food. Do you want to shout out any of your favourite spots? Um, the Corner Cafe. Oh. And just every- the library. I like the library. Everyone find Julia at the Corner. Actually, no, you won't I find her. I think it's her. called the Corner Cafe. Because not- she's graduated, but she won't yeah, be there. Well, if I go back for postgrad, you may find me there. Yep. But also, <laughs> um, a little shout out too. Um, so... Deacon has just at Burwood, they've just put in a new five story building um, that is for exercise science and health. And it is incredible. The, wow. On the bottom level, they have a full clinic that they use for the students that are studying exercise physiology. Um, and then the, I think like the third level is, a, I think the second level, maybe just offices or something. The third level is a full on gym, hectic. They've got Olympic lifting platforms. They have force plates. They have like all built in. They have probably some of the best um, equipment and setup that I've seen. Probably one of the best gyms I've been to, to be honest. Wow. Yeah. And that's really great. What, that's what you want. Yeah. And I think they're going to get some like athletes and um, and stuff going through there. So that would be great. I think in the future from what um, one of the um, – educators told me that they were going to start getting the athletes through there and kind of try and operate it like a high performance gym so that students can do placement in there and that may be like part of the course they're still looking at it i don't know cool but there's a little inside scoop there you go and lastly how well your course has prepared you for a career in your field how prepared do you feel i feel about like a four okay that's yeah. pretty good pretty prepared yeah i feel like pretty prepared uh, mm, maybe could be more but I feel like that's kind of stuff that you need to source yourself like more placements and even jobs and stuff which is what I'm in the process of doing now of course getting jobs yeah and I guess this type of degree or sorry this type of industry is like where you're constantly learning and you're constantly developing your knowledge so three years of a degree is not going to teach you everything and everything yeah is that right yeah you have to keep learning yeah and I guess the biggest learning experiences I've had have been on placement and when I've been actually working in real world real settings with real people real clients real athletes so that's where i've really developed definitely settings and lastly what's something you wish you knew when you were in year 11 or year 12 that you don't have to go to uni if you don't want to and that there are definitely other options for example you could do a cert for in fitness and you could make a career out of that and that's fine so i don't i just yeah i want to avoid putting people and labeling people and putting them in boxes depending on where they've gone to uni where they've gone to school what they're doing with their lives it doesn't matter it's 
you know, just just be happy, enjoy. Exactly. Everyone's you know? on their own path. And don't work too much. Just enjoy. <laughs> Make your money, but just have time for your friends, have time for your family. Yeah. You're hilarious. You just work hard, do all these interns. Oh, and, then, and then your advice is don't work. Just, that's my approach at the moment. I'm not working that much, which is good, and I'm just enjoying, you know. Yeah. Well, you deserve it. You need a break yeah. at the end as well. And that's well. what I mean. Give yourself a break. Like take that gap year, even if it is in your last year. If it is in your second year, do it. Definitely. Well, if you want to. Julia, you have shared such wise words. I've absolutely loved chatting with you today. <gasps> Thanks for having me, Mia. Anytime. Now, if anyone does have any further questions, are they able to reach out to you in some way? Of course. So I will tag Julia. Um, you can email me though. So if you ever want to contact Julia, maybe it's about studying at Deakin or doing exercise sports science or even finding um, internship. She's the girl to go to because she's got such a wealth of knowledge and experience. She'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks. I will link her email. You're welcome to reach out to her anytime. Yes, definitely. But, but yeah, thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye. If you like this episode or have any more questions, head over to our Instagram at the.studentspace. Now there is a full stop between the and student. And just remember, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and does not provide any personal advice. Thank you for all your support, everyone. See you later.